Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and it's been a year since Black Myth Wukong has released an official gameplay trailer, and they kind of surprised the world last year, and they released a new one yesterday uh, that's 12 minutes long using the new Unreal Engine 5, which is a project they're working with Epic Games uh, in terms of improving the final product of the game. So with that said, we're going to break down this trailer, and we're going to talk about some of the details shown, not only gameplay, but also the setting. The storyline is kind of iffy because aside from what we know last time in terms of who's the main character and what type of story plot they're going to use, we don't know too much extra just from the gameplay footage. But let's jump into it. I'll be pausing quite a bit to highlight certain things and at the end we'll go to their actual website to look at some of the screenshots as well as wallpaper they created for this one uh, to kind of take a deeper look into some of the details that's kind of hard to capture in video. Alright, so right off the bat we have this really beautiful scenery, and this is not fictional. This is actually a real place uh, in China. It's called Da Zhu Shi Diao. Uh, if you want to search it up, search D A Z U rock carvings. Uh, it's a place outside of Chongqing, and they have all these beautiful rock carvings. And I think it's one of the eight uh, rock carving sites of the world, wonders of the world. And I think there are like five mountains in this entire area, all with different sorts of carvings depicting scenes from uh, the Buddhist faith as well as the Taoism face, as well as um, some Confucian uh, principles. So you see people like Confucius in the same scene depicted with Laozi, as well as Buddhists. And this one's very Buddha focused. They were showing us, they're going to show us a couple more scenes from this location. Now this scene definitely draws onto the original novel, whereas it's a fantasy novel for sure, Journey to the West, but it does take elements from the real world. And as you journey towards the west, towards India, it's likely you'll pass through the region around Chongqing and Dazhu. And for these sculptures, uh, they started carving these during the Tang Dynasty, which is when the novel takes place. And it continued all the way to Qing and Ming. And it's a Yusuko uh, heritage site. Actually, I think it's five Yusuko heritage site in this one location. A really good place to go visit uh, if you're ever going to be in China. And they have all these stone tablets with the carvings of uh, scripture as well, which you can see beneath the bridge, as well as all these really colorful and very vivid uh, sculptures of different Buddhas. And more scriptures on these um, obelisk-like uh, pillars, basically, sitting on top of a lotus seat. Now, of course, the tree branches being floating up like that is probably not realistic, uh, probably added in to spice up the scene. And this would be a Taoist scene with uh, the bridge right there. So in the centerpiece here, you can make out three figures. Uh, this guy with a really big bump on top of his head, um, he should be holding something called a ruyi with a hat. And then he should be holding actually a baby, but uh, they represent Fu Lu Shou, uh, which are three gods of the Taoist fate, representing uh, luck, good fortune, and long life, longevity. Uh, the guy with the bump is the longevity. Should be holding a peach right here. Uh, the one in the middle should be Lu, which is um, who you pray to if you want a good promotion at work, and um, Fu meaning good luck and good fortune. And so we have some Taoist scenes. Um, I'm sure this is from Da Zhu as well. I mean, we have something called a Wu Shou, means headless. Um, I don't think he's anything special here. Uh, he's playing what looks like a two chord, but it's not a Arhu because it's a flicked rather than uh, using a bow to draw on it. Um, I don't know the actual instrument name, but it's definitely um, something that, you know, it's factual. 
，我早就看穿了你们。安贼的情怀大义，一心。This is real. This is in Dazu. I think it's on top of one of the mountain. It's a, a Tianshou Guan Yin、um, Thousand Hand. I don't know what Guan Yin is in English though.、Uh, but you've seen the dance performance where、uh, the dancers line up and their hands come up from the back. It comes from this. I mean, Naruto fans definitely seen、uh, you know the Thousand Hand move. But this statue, it actually looks like this、um, in the temple. If you go to Dazu, very cool.、Uh, they're taking these. Directly from those locations. No idea who he is, but I think given how many eyes he has, he might be the older、uh, disciple of Pan Sidong's,、um, the, the spider ladies,、um, fellow. A、disciple from the same sect. I I don't know where the eyes are on his body and they shoot out. And we're gonna see that move later on. We're not gonna comment too much about the monsters、uh, because I don't know what the artist take on them is. But that will be my guess there. And I'm not gonna translate the bottom because they already done that for the video, which is great. There's a little piece of the video where they didn't do translations. I'll explain that. But here. We have a scene where they're showing something called the twenty-eight mansions, or our Shaba Xingxiu.、Uh, these are the twenty-eight constellations that the Chinese culture、uh, used to mark the skies, and each of them have a physical、uh, manif、uh, you know, manifestation in terms of a statue look.、Uh, some are, are more human looking, as the two ladies on the left. Some are more、uh, monster looking, as you'll see the the crazy hair on the right. And they also have a creature form as well as an animal spirit that's associated with each of them, and also one of the five elements.、Um, these are technically、uh, things that evolve over time, very similar to Western horoscopes, which is also matching constellations. There's a lot of fortune telling elements attached to these, but each of them will represent a group of constellation in the sky.、Uh, not too different from Western ones, but obviously the markation of the sky that would be used. Will be based in China, and they will be slightly different groupings. But the purpose of these are very similar to、um, horoscope constellations, where you see they're、uh, revolving around、uh, the Earth to kind of mark your calendar and certain events associated with each season. And each of these are given traits associated to that. And we're going to see. Okay, I think I'm going to pause. Hold on. Yeah, the video quality is a little choppy, even though I got this from the official website. When I pause and unpause, could be my computer's issue. But this statue comes to life because it's not actually a statue; it's our monkey's transformation. And of course, Wu Kong has 72 transformations. Not that he has only 72 things he can change into, but 72 categories of things, and. Like being lifelike, or being a human-like, or being a you know a bird-like. Those are all one of the、uh, changes. The one that he actually transformed out of is, I believe, Shi Huo Shi Huo Zhu, which will be one of the constellations belonging to like the northern group. The twenty-eighth divided into four directions. Each direction gets seven constellations, and each of the cardinal direction has a, a creature associated with it. And he is in the north.、Uh, not too important. I think he's just you know that statue is a cool looking one. And I think they based the statues from,、um, I think a place in Shanxi, which would be a historical because that place wasn't、uh, it wasn't carved until like the Song Dynasty. But it it is a good representation of it. And this is also one of those that should be sitting inside that temple with the rest of the twenty eight constellation. But it's placed out here on purpose because we actually have a firm setting on. Where we are for this part of the gameplay showcase, we are in a place called the Minor Western Heavens, Xiao Xi Tian, or Xiao Lei Yin Si, and this is a place from the book where、uh, we have a student from Mila Buddha come down, and he gathered a lot of monsters and demons, have them all transform, and casted a place that looks exactly like、uh, the Western Heavens, which is where. The journey to the west 
needs to end. That's their destination. And they called it a minor uh, Western heaven, which was the first giveaway. It's not real, but uh, Tang Sen won it anyways. And they basically transformed all themselves into uh, the different Buddhas and pretended to be the final destination to trick the group into going in. And then they try to obviously capture all of them. And this uh, student that escaped from Mila Buddha is the yellow brow demon or Huang Mei uh, Lao Guai or Lao Zhu, sometimes he's called. And he has yellow brows. He stole a couple of very powerful artifacts from Mila Buddha. And one of them is a gold symbol, a symbol with the instrument, uh, C-Y-M-B-A-L. Uh, usually a percussion instrument in the West where if you, it's part of a drum set, you smack it. But like in marching band, if you're not using it in a set, you have to have a pair and you kind of just slam the two of them into each other to make a sound. Um, in here, you only got one of them. It's called a dinnao uh, in Chinese. And you would throw it out kind of like a metal hat and it will land on you with the bump section and trap you inside. And after three days, you're supposed to dissolve uh, into goo, a blood goo inside, you just die. And you can't get out because it's really tight. There's no gap when it's pressed down on you. And obviously Wukong gets trapped. So uh, Ba Jie and Sha Sheng, the other two disciples, uh, goes to find help. And they went to the 28 mansions to ask them to come down and help. And this is one of them. This is Tu Jinlong. Uh, these names are a little weird because they represent, the first character represent their name in the constellation. The second character is one of the five element, in this case, metal, Jin. And then Long would be the creature associated with it, in this case, a dragon. So you can kind of see a dragon's head here and the claw, the four talon dragon, which is very uh, traditionally um, Chinese dragons. They're very long, snake-like, serpent-like with talons uh, for feet. And uh, that's the creature, uh, the, the, the form that he takes. This is like the human form. And he has a horn uh, on his head and he used the horn and pried the horn into uh, the symbol and Wukong used his rod, which can change shapes, uh, changed it to a very small, tiny drill and pricked a hole on the tip of the horn. And he made himself super small as well, put himself in that little gap where he poked the horn, uh, the, the hole in the horn. And once they pulled the horn out, he escaped or else there was no gap that he could create. And his a rod couldn't make a dent in the symbol either. And we're going to see this golden symbol later on in this video as well. So this is uh, Tu Jinlong, and he's featured here because we do know that the story plot takes place after the journey to the West. So perhaps they built this statue symbolizing his contributions uh, to helping Wukong defeat uh, the original uh, bosses here. And uh, we don't know who we're playing. It's not Wukong. There's no circlet on his head, but it could also be removed after he finished the journey. So we don't know. Maybe it's a reincarnation. Maybe it's a different take on it, but he's revisiting these places and it's after the events of Journey to the West. So maybe they built the statue to symbolize his contribution. That's my guess. And of course, people are talking about the stealth, even though, is that really stealth? Like, if we really want to stealth, can't we just keep our transformations and just sneak by everyone? And we get to this really cool snow area with these frozen people who can wake up, obviously. Uh, a lot of horror elements and obviously a showcase of the snow. Okay, that screen tear fixed itself, so I'm not going to rewind there. Yeah, the graphic is amazing. Already worried about graphic card issues down the line. And we get a mini boss, and this should be a Shan Xiao, which is one of those mountain demons depicted in the classic of Mountain and Sea. They're really, you know, taking inspiration from real life bamboons, I think. They're ape like creatures, a little dark, and this kind of fits. It's not really a creature from the Journey to the West, but it's a very classical Chinese um, monster that's usually depicted kind of like this. And he seems to know how to use these guys. And the snow. Yeah, the snow is impressive. And we get combat again. 
I'm pausing because once again, a couple of things that were you know the same from last time, a couple of things that's different from what we have seen before, and some things you could probably pay attention to are these uh, combat UIs. So this is still stance. I think this was how it worked uh, before. So this is the stance where your rod goes extending. Uh, the staff extends forward and becomes extra long for a poke. There's going to be like a base stance where the staff is going down, and there's going to be another stance where you can kind of twirl your staff around. We're going to see that once. And then you have these icons here, which I think builds up, and you can spin them into performing like a special, kind of similar to sort of Street Fighter style. And you can see these like light up in gold, and he can spin them, and he's going to pull off some moves. I'll highlight that when it happens, maybe rewind it. Over here, we have health. And when we meet a dragon later on, um, if we get hit with a status effect, the status effect actually reflects itself on your health bar. Like we were, we're going to get hit by thunder and it's going to show thunder effect on your health when you get hit by it. The blue seems to be mana and you seem to only use it when you use these spells here, these three here. And this is your current form. This is the character for Yuan, which is ape. So we're in the ape form who transform. We'll have a different symbol and we saw some of the transformations into like the mini boss into the wolf last time or the video last year and we get a different character here and maybe different skill sets uh, for those and because they chose hexagon i wouldn't be surprised if there's actually going to end up having more of these around it having only three active abilities seems a little low um this one's a dodge and there's no real cooldowns on this from as far as i can see and when you have like a perfect dodge you leave like a sort of a vision clone of yourself where you dodged. And I think only these use mana. The dodging doesn't seem to use mana, which is the blue bar. And this is kind of a stamina bar, but I think it's stamina for your actual staff. And I have a theory on that. It does go down quite a bit, but I think it's not based on your stamina, but your staff stamina. Kind of like uh, you'll see a staff extension move later on, and you're gonna see this go down as you extend but then it's gonna pause when you're at a certain length when you stop extending it. Kind of like maybe a stamina for climbing in Breath of the Wild, where you can climb up to a certain point. If you max it out, you start falling. So perhaps this is kind of like exertion of your staff. And this is a gourd, which is the gourd you're carrying. You can drink this to heal. And these two spells, I think only this one showcase, and when it does, we'll pause it again. Yeah, we barely took any damage from that. I'm sure they probably play tested this very similar to what they did last year, where they turned the difficulty settings all on pretty low, where you're not just taking a lot of damage from anything like this. A little less stress on the play tester. And I think we're approaching Lei Yin Si. And here he sits with a very long saber. His combat moves are really cool looking. Like the VFX, obviously great, but you can also note that he's gonna have like a, well, he spits. One, two, three, right? He has a slash and that one, that last move, he swapped the sword into his feet. His combo finisher is always on his feet, like a big arc. There we go, see that? And he's gonna grab it back. Pretty neat. And that's the shadow clone we leave when we kind of have a dodge. And you can see the dodge go to cooldown for a little bit. It glows red when we do that. We'll do that a couple more times, so if you want to pay attention to that. Or you can just rewind it yourself. And he also farts! So you know, gas comes out from both holes. And the combo finisher is on the foot. Yeah. That's another dodge. And here's a spell. So you see the highlighted in red on the bottom? This is a warding spell. Uh, from the book, you know, you draw a circle under your master and he sits inside. Monster can't approach the circle, but obviously he leaves. In this case, you're using it on yourself, so you create a zone where they can't get here. So you're gonna kind of cheat and heal in safety. And you can see the gourd uh, goes down a little bit and you heal up a little bit. 
and our mana went down from using that spell. You see, stamina doesn't really drop that much, but when you dodge, you kind of use it too, but not much. But when you hit with a rock, well, that's your ult. Let's go back. You see the the right side? You see the glowing uh, hexagons? It's going to build up to three. Oh, you get it when you do a perfect dodge. That's how you get one. And you can see you're spending it now. You're spending all three to twirl up. Oh, that graphic really, really teared. But let's see. When you do the dodge, you get the third one, I think. There we go. Yeah, that's how you do it. And then he activated it, and his rod be or his staff became on fire. And he's, you know, tore it down, but he missed. But still, I think that's how you use combos. You got to get dodge during combat to build up those points, and you use those points for special moves. The, you dodge, you got one more. He used it right away. So maybe less damage. It's always this move. And he's pleading for mercy. It's a trap. So this means chujai, meaning eating vegetarian. Uh, or not technically vegetarian. Jai has a slightly different definition, but you can think of it vegetarian. Nian Fu means reading the scriptures. Um, and these are all things you do when you uh, are of the Buddhist faith or of most Buddhist faith. There are different sects that doesn't really have certain requirements, but let's generalize it to Buddhist faith. And Song Jing Da Zuo means uh, reading the scriptures. Nian Fu is like keeping Buddha in your heart. And Song Jing is like reading the scriptures, actually. Da Zuo is meditating. These are all things you do if you're considered Buddhist. But how many people who do these things actually have a heart uh, that is as calm as water? So that's uh, basically no lust, no desire, that type of feel. Qing Jing Wu Wei, that's actually kind of a Taoist feel. Wu Wei is, you know, not doing anything. That's a very Taoist concept. Uh, but basically, it's creating doubt that the people who say they are practicing are actually practicing. Look at you. In this snowstorm, you're still trying so hard. You must be here for that thing. We don't know what that thing is. And the person telling us this is a Tudi. So basically like a minor god from this region. We saw one of them. Uh, last time when they popped out from the ground, but in this region it seems to take the form of a bird with a face. <laughs> oh, they're local guardians essentially, and he says, Before you came, I, you know, foretold your fortune, and guess what it said? It says to move, uh, rather stay still than move. Those with talents, but no lives. So kind of uh, don't come here, don't take, you know, don't be active, be passive. You might have talent, but if you do this, you're gonna die, essentially. <laughs> but if you want to go die, I'm not gonna stop you. <clears throat> So we get the confirmation for the location, Xiao Xi Tian, Minor Western Heaven. Tu Di is like the, you know, minor god of this land. Um, here to welcome the Fated One, the Tian Ming Ren. This is a term they used in the last uh, trailer they showed a year ago as well. And that's our main character. So we don't know who he is, but he's technically not Wu Kong because we also saw Wu Kong fight him in the trailer from last year as well. Yeah. And we see a transformation again. This time we're the bat. We're following the minor god. I don't know the purpose of these, uh, you know, transformation for this type of travel. We saw it with the golden cicada last time. Like, in terms of gameplay, is this just, you know, scene transitions? Or can you do this freely? These are all things we don't really know. And we get a dragon. So, there's a couple theories on what this is, and I think because of the location 
And because that he has a horn right here, I don't think he's like one of the dragons from one of the four seas, right? That's the common trend. He's also kind of glittering white. Maybe he's the horse one, but I don't think so. I think this is Tu Jinlong, the statue we saw earlier, who, you know, helped Wukong back in the day here. One of the 28 mansions, which is why the 28 mansions are shown twice already. And the horns where he drilled and got out. And he's supposed to be one of the Eastern constellation group, which is symbolized by a dragon. And he uh, has the horn. And I think the element he controls should be wind. Um, but then again, um, thunder is not really an element. I mean, legends will technically be. But anyways, he's using thunder here. So not sure what this dragon is, but I would think Jin Kong, uh, Kong Jin Long is probably the right call. And we get a lot of different combat moves. Uh, once again, dodging give us those points and we can use it for combat. And you can always see the boss's health on the bottom, in the middle. And you can see our health bar. When we get hit by a lightning effect, uh, we, we didn't get hit there, but when we do, you'll see the lightning effect kind of glowing on our health. And I think we get slowed, so maybe kind of a debuff. And there we go. You can see the not much health damage, but effect damage. And they're showcasing the ice effect and all the visuals. I mean, this is an Unreal Engine 5 showcase. That's really the purpose. And we got ourselves a couple more points for dodging. And we're going to end up using those points for that move, which he missed again. That's a win move, right? So perhaps Kong Jin Long is real. And we change the stance to the twirling stance. And here we are twirling. You see the bottom right, the stance is different. We've seen this last year too. And switch back. And you can see the rod growing right here. That's something we haven't seen so far. And this is where I notice the stamina bar is probably the stamina of the raw of the staff. You can see it goes up and the, the stamina goes down to a certain point. And this is more obvious later on as well. Ah, still missing. Ooh, that tail. There we go. Alright. And he's gonna cheat now and start calling down lightning. See, when we're twirling, we're using stamina on the bar. AC goes up and the stamina freezes here. And the rod doesn't go down anymore, so it's not like a sustained stamina. It's not like maintaining this cost stamina. It's just that we use this to extend our rod a certain point, and we smack him. Haijiだ鱼兰会上，世尊说过，众生之苦。Fang Pi is really my ass. Like it's it's like farting, but it means like what he said, what Buddha said, is wrong. And this Buddha is uh Ru Lai, right? The main Buddha that uh, lives in Lei Yin Si, and the one that the yellow brow demon is pretending to be in the minor Western heavens. And he represents the present for the Buddhist faith. And there's another separate Buddha that represents the path. And the yellow brow demons' Buddha that he served is Mila, Mila Buddha, who represents the future. And we're going to see a reference to that a bit later as well. And we get a couple of scenes of different monsters. Once again, it's a little fast to figure out who's who. We still have the unbreakable move, the stance. This one is the blue mane lion for sure. Uh, we talked about there was a painting at the beginning of the trailer from last year 
and it had three different monsters or demons on it. One is like a white elephant, one is a blue mane lion, and there is the Rourke. Um, so this is definitely the blue mane lion. It, it looks exactly like that. And using the saber or the dalt makes perfect sense for that. Right? I think this is shooting from the eyes. I think this is from the spider cave. And this is the final boss of last year's trailer, which they said they created already and people played it during playtesting, but they didn't show it as part of the trailer. We only saw up to the wolf, which is his friend. And this is the final boss, the guy who stole the robe from the teacher, the black bear. And this is Xiaolin, I guess, uh, where all the monster has transformed into different Buddhas and they're sitting here in this temple um, and they're pretending to be the Buddhas. But there is something strange about this, which I think we can take a look at better once we get to the screenshot portion. But these will be all monster transformations. And usually, this person, this person should have been uh, Ru Lai, right? The present Buddha, but he's calling himself Wei Lai, which represents Mi Le, and the fact that he has a really big tummy and should be smiling. Um, it, I mean, the Mi Le Buddha is often known as the smiling Buddha in China. And he's kind of representing that character, but we know he's fake. It's kind of hard to tell here, but you can tell from their website, his eyebrows are yellow. So after his failed uh, imitation of Rulai and getting defeated, somehow in the future, which is when this is taking place, he's back and he's pretending to be his own master for some reason. He's asking you, now you see me, why are you not bowing? There's more. This sound, this baying sound, is from inside the symbol. You're in the dark symbol for that scene, and we're going to see the symbol soon. more rock carvings from Dazu. And yeah, the yellow brow demon's really strong. Uh, even in the book, uh, very hard to beat. This is the symbol. They made it really fancy. Normally a symbol is just really flat with a bump in the middle, but they carved so much on it. It's really awesome looking. But the fact it's not kind of slammed into a flat surface makes you wonder like, how are they trapped inside if it's not like slammed down shut? But still a cool looking piece. And the music's still top notch. They're using a lot of the old songs from different iterations of uh, Journey to the West. Alrighty, so the trailer's over, and we officially hopped to their website, which is heishenhua.com. Uh, it's on their trailer as well, and you can download their trailer if you want over here, which is where I got it. And you can, they have a new English translation, which is defaulted because I'm here in the States, 
Um, the Chinese one probably is better in terms of telling the story. Uh, their translation's decent, but a lot of the philosophy elements is hard to translate. Uh, regardless, let's stick to English since we're you know commenting English anyways. And that was kind of the last slogan line they had at the end of the video. Uh, basically, you got to understand this group of developers are treating this kind of like a passion project. They used to work under a very big publisher, making uh, different games that had perhaps a lot of microtransaction or they were forced to cut out content for different releases um, on similar theme, but different game. And now they get to make their own version of Wukong and a myth uh, kind of environment. They're trying to make this into kind of a, a Chinese mythology universe, which is why it's called Black Myth. And Wukong is just one of the chapters. So this is their first uh, introduction to this. And this is their kind of uh, reminder to lock and load and be ready to develop. And this is the close up of what we saw at the end. And the yellow brow is super obvious here. And he's holding this bag. This is one of the three artifacts he took with him when he left uh, Mi Le. And this, I think, is called Ren Zhong Dai. Uh, basically, can suck whatever you want into it. It's kind of like a giant vacuum uh, that is very powerful that you can't escape. Um, and there, there's a lot of literature analysis on him in particular uh, because there are many argues that he represents, like, kind of a uh, hypocrisy with a lot of the Buddhist faith, which I think is like a theme that this entire team is trying to build on. You're going to see some of their philosophies on developing this game and how they want to focus on the monsters and demons that, you know, as a kid, you read that Wukong and the group are good and they beat up all these monsters, but you have to question why these monsters are here, what are their motivations, and what kind of uh, representation they present. Because the book is not entirely... Um, rooted in a lot of the religious part. You know, it's a book written to entertain the masses. And a lot of the literature analysis of the book, because it's such consider it's considered one of the four classic literature pieces in China. Um, so there's a lot of literature analysis. And when it comes to analyzing him, uh, his three artifacts are the symbol, right? That's one he stole, the bag or the sack, and the other one is his weapon, which used to be a little rod, that he would bang something called, I think, Qing, which, which is like a, xyl a hanging xylophone is the best description. It's a percussion instrument in ancient China where they take different uh, sides, stone or metal sheets of different length and, and, and thickness, and they would hang them up. And when you strike them with the stick, uh, they will produce different uh, tones and you can play music with them. That was his job for Mila Buddha. So he escaped, and the stick that he used, he transformed it into a long ya bang, which is basically a mace. Uh, you actually see the first monster that Wukong fights, the mini monsters, the mobs. The first one that wakes up is using one of those weapons. So it's a rod, it's a sack, and it's a symbol. And there are those who you know, do literature analysis that those represents the reproductive organs for male and female. Uh, symbols come in pair, have little bumps, represents the uh, the female breast, and the sack and the rod represents the male genitalia, and it's like a kind of a, 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 a kind of an innuendo joke, and it kind of makes sense that he's also called Huang Mei, uh, yellow brow, because like innuendo jokes in Chinese are called yellow jokes, so. There's a lot of connection, but sometimes it's just people analyzing literature a little bit too much. But it's also not difficult to see how an author would write that to entertain the masses with a book because people like to listen to things like that. Anyhow, uh, this is the, the text here is talking about their team uh, that when they worked in the industry under a big publisher, they were forced to compromise, right? Player characters or human characters from their game Legends of Hunter Hero were made to look more monster-like instead of more human-like because it sells better. And why, you know, Art of War Red Tide has so essence, I think, microtransaction currency. I, I have not played the game, so I have no idea. But I think that's what they're hinting at. And now they feel like they have their hands on this passion project they have control of, so they're going to try to uh, make something that's good. And then we have something more about their philosophy on building the game focusing on the villains and so forth, creating this Eastern fantasy world universe for 
future game as well. And this one, it's about the monkey being the lead, but they want to focus on these bosses as well. Give them a backstory. And the banner stands sold for y'all quite would be free. Oh, this is telling. I think this is old. I think they had this before. This is how they came to make the game. And they have a couple screenshots and videos from this where it's kind of easier to pick out certain details. We talked about this. I think for most of these, we paused and talked about. So this was one of the monsters with really long years. So I think he's representing another Buddha character. Perhaps we're still in the same place with a fake Buddha character. I mean, maybe a Luohan even. I mean, you can also see the burnt marks on his forehead, which, you know, you burn candle uh, marks onto your head uh, for a lot of the monks, Buddhist monks. This cannot tell. Uh, the black bear, the dragon with the horn up close with paws. So, like, you can't capture this detail through video. It's really hard to pause right on the screen. And the rod, the lightning. It's, just, it's a beautiful game. You, you can't lie. I think that's the biggest draw of the game so far. Like, the stuff they're showing... It's like showing promise of having things like Dark Soul-like combat against bosses in a very nice setting and uh, very interesting movesets as well. And the ward that you casted, a closer look at what I think is Shan Xiao, that eye demon, and that's it. Got a couple wallpapers. I think this stuff, some are new, some are old. I have no idea what the falling head is. But it seems like he can blow fire and rolls around the ground. Another scenery piece. That's the temple. I mean, this reminds you of like, it's a small world after all. Like, it's a miniature. It's not like, it's not what it seems to be, right? Like in the book, when they went to Xiao Lian Si, it's actually a temple. I don't know why they have a miniature here. And I don't know why he's kind of role-playing as Mi Lua instead of Wu Lai. But this is all part of the plot that we will probably find out when we do get to play. The 28 mansions, this is the one that Wukong was pretending to be. I wonder what happened to the original statue. I mean, it doesn't make sense the temple would have a missing statue for the 28 mansions. Depiction of, of dragon statue here. That's the armor on a creature. No idea what creature this is, though. A couple more scenes. Another front view. Yeah, if you guys like wallpapers, go to their website and grab these if you want. Uh, it seems to be a dragon. I think this is one of the four guardians of the south gate of heaven. And I think that's it. Fulu show again. All things we kind of pause. This is where the headless guy was playing music. Yeah, these stone carvings, very impressive. You can think of this location, five mountains worth of sites, like five unical culture, heritage culture site in one place. Very worth going. And you'll be, you know, in Chongqing. Uh, so for those of you on the channel who watch me play a lot of Total War Three Kingdoms, you'll be in the Shuba region uh, where uh, Liu Bei's group are. So you can go to Sichuan and visit there as well. If you're in town, go check this out. And these are old. These are from last time. So that's going to do it for this breakdown video. Um, they're probably going to share more news as we get closer and closer to launch. I still think it's years away, to be honest, despite them showing you know more advanced gameplay on the new engine. Um, they seem to be teasing us once every half year. There was this New Year piece they put out, and they might put out another New Year piece. So it's going to be a while before we get more news, but it's excited to see them show us new things. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and see you guys next time. Bye.